Hey gang, it's just what the internet needs. Another video of the dinner frips. Pontus to Pontus? Pontus? Pontus to this thing weighs a ton. I'm gonna have to do some cheating here and rest it on some foam. Okay. Ah, yes. Shiny. I don't feel like you see these in black as much. It's always the silver one. The Ares 2 is always in black, and then the Pontus and the Venus and the Terminator you always see in silver, but the black looks really nice. It's it's the same uh, anodized aluminum brush finish, all that. Okay, aesthetics aside, let's take a little trip through history, through my history. <laughs> uh, I reviewed the Ares 2 a while back, and I really liked it for its fluidity, its sort of natural, honest presentation, but I think my criticisms were that, you know, it had a little bit of softness, maybe a little bit of lack of space or detail at certain points, and I ultimately got pulled away into the world of Chord and the Cutest and the TT2, and since then I think I've also tried the RME, ADI2, um, and then sort of switched directions back uh, uh, towards uh, R2R DAX with a very uh, non-technically <laughs> advanced Border Patrol. Um, anyway, it's been a wild ride since then, but I've been living with this for a, quite a while now. I think since, yeah, probably like six, seven months, maybe a little longer. Um, and I absolutely love this stack. Uh, this will be a two-parter because we're also going to look at the Iris Denifrips D to D converter. And so I guess the kind of the two questions here are like, if you're an Aries 2 fan, if you like the Denifrips sound, is this a worthwhile upgrade? Um, and then sort of beyond that, does the Iris make a big difference or not? And, and should you consider adding it to the chain? So let's talk about this guy. And I have spent time, like I said, over these mini moons, comparing this with um, other R to R DAX in and above this price uh, to cord stuff, to some chip DAX, and just a, a bunch of stuff. So I've, I've had a lot of time to listen to it, um, doing kind of quick A, B, and B swap comparing, and also just doing days of listening and going back and forth and trying to see what jumped out at me or what, what parts I really missed when I wasn't listening to it. Um, so it, it does have that naturalness that you want from R to R DAC. Um, but the detail is just outstanding. Um, you know, when, when compared to some of my criticisms of, of other R to R DACs, the, the detail here is, it, it's super palpable. I'm always sort of looking for that balance between, um, you know, uh, definition and realism without a sense of exaggeration. I think I've maybe used the analogy of like uh, HDR before, right? Where like it's kind of cool looking, but there's something just a little wrong and your brain can't quite get over it. We don't want to go that far, and there are DACs that do that. <laughs> Um, but we also don't want this sort of like just dreamy Vaseline on the lens, sort of like uh, overly soft feeling. We want to find that, that balance that's true to life where if you're doing detailed listening, you can pick apart all the little nuance and texture, but your brain isn't actively trying to do that. You're just listening to the music. Um, so I think the the there's a lot of layers and separation that this, that this stack puts forward. Um, that I think are, are really beautiful. I don't know why I'm just turning this around. As you know, my videos, they're, they're very boring visually, but at least you're getting to see the craftsmanship. I mean, the, this thing is like a giant chunk <laughs> of aluminum on the front. The casework is awesome. Um, I don't think the photos always do these things justice. Like it's not, you know, a little sort of extruded aluminum case with the front plate. All of all of the casework, as you saw on the in the back, is like super thick. It's like a quarter inch of aluminum on top. Um, not that you necessarily need a hugely heavy case, but you do want something that's stable and dense and will reduce the amount of 
potential interference from outside forces. Um, just, just real quick. I mean, who cares? All the stuff's on the website. You can see what's on the back of it. But this is a truly dual mono design, which is awesome, and I think contributes to some of the performance that we get from it. Um, you got all your digital ends that you could want. I primarily run USB because I'm lazy and I like it and it's simple and that's why the iris is helpful. We'll talk about that later. Um, anyway, yeah, I think, you know, um, you get this nice, like, sense of uh, sort of separation in the layers, but it doesn't start to take take the song apart, which is, is a big one for me. Like, I don't want to be paying so much attention um, to the technical capabilities that I'm missing, the musicality of the song. A lot of resolving power here, though. Like, it really does dig in and get you a ton of detail back. And it's got much more dimensionality than the Aries. The sound is much more sculptural. And you just get a better sense of space between the instruments, which I really like. It's it's a very spacious DAC to my ear. Um, yeah, it's like you sort of switch from other DACs, and it's like just just putting on, on, on your glasses. Like, everything sort of comes into focus. But again, like to go back to the like photo processing analogy it's the idea that you got the shot tack sharp when you took the photo which is to say that like your focus of the actual capturing of the fo of the photo was was perfect not like you went in after the fact in photoshop and like cranked up the sharpness filter and made everything be contrasty or made the edge definition be really pronounced because that's not that's effortful and it looks effortful but when you see the little bee on the flower petal and they're like in beautiful crispness and then the you know the the the, the bokeh the, the the natural sort of occurring uh fuzziness around it kicks in and it just looks so right uh and it just feels true to your brain it's like that's that's what we're after right and one of the things that i think great DAX do, especially R to R DAX, is this idea of decay, right? How does the note end? When does it end? Can you, does it just drop off at a certain point or does it just whisper and disappear into space? Um, and the inverse of that, of course, is sort of the ramp. Like, does the note just sort of pop in out of nowhere or do you get, does it build a little? Does it have a little ramp? And you get, you get both of that, um, both of those traits, um, with this with this DAC and that is just a rewarding listen um on the front panel <laughs> you know the interface is a little tricky sometimes to use because there's these little tiny pin leds that from certain angles are almost impossible to see like if you have a rack and you're looking down on it like you just forget about it um and the sort of like what bit rate you're at thing is like a little bit I had to wrap my head around, but maybe I'm just slow with math. Um, you can do some phase swapping stuff, which is like not, I really found a great use for that. You can do oversampled and non oversampled. I like the non oversampled much better myself. Um, and then there's some like deeper menus for when you're like setting up um, your I2 square stuff, um, which we can talk about with the iris. Um, and then just, you know, uh, swapping between your inputs. Um, anyway, back to the sound. Uh, vocals just offer a real step up in detail and naturalness, like whispery stuff, breathy stuff. Oh, just so rewarding. Um, there's no real glare in this. There's nothing really fatiguing that jumps out at you. It's just, it's just all the stuff you want to hear without the stuff you don't want to hear. I find like solo strings to be very telling. <laughs> They're just very revealing because there's just nowhere to hide. When you have complicated music with lots of instrumentation, it's like your brain can't really pick all that apart at one time. But when you just hear like, um, I was listening to this, uh, what is it? Uh, Anja uh, Lechner, who's this German cellist. Um, and she's featured on this album, um, Lantano. And her just coming in solo on some tracks and you just hear the the resin off the bow and the resonance in the room and it's just like woof that's so cool um this this DAC also really really can scale um move my little foamy bits uh like if the rest of the chain is improved 
uh, whether that's the headphones that you're listening to or the amp um, or the quality of your source, like you will get more and more out of it. Um, and I think that's important to think about when we talk about whether it's worth upgrading, which I will in a second. I do have a couple nitpicks besides some of the interface stuff. Um, I don't think this DAC has the hardest hitting bass or the fullest bass um, compared to other things I've heard. Um, and to that end, sometimes it feels almost a little bit thin or a little bit fragile. Um, it's not like a, like people think of like art art as is maybe having a bit more warmth or a bit of a more analog or vintage sound. If that's what you're seeking, I don't know that this amp's really going to make you happy because I don't, yeah, it's just not kind of what it's going for as much. Um, and so, you know, is it worth it? Is it worth it? Is it worth it? I don't know. Probably not. You know what? <laughs> How much money do you want to spend on this crazy hobby? Um, you know, if you think about the Aries 2 being like 200 or 825 bucks retail, and you think about this being, you know, more than twice that at like 1765, I don't know, Singapore dollars, US dollars always moving. So it's hard to, hard to know exactly the price, but you know, either way, the relationship of the two will be consistent. Um, is this twice as good as Aries 2? I don't know. I don't think so. Like, what does that even, you know, this is a hobby of law of diminishing returns. You have to decide for yourself what amount of performance for price you're willing to accept. I think you, you put the Aries 2 and the Pontus 2 next to each other. Like this DAC makes a compelling case that, uh, it is worth the additional dollars in as much as any of this crazy stuff makes any sense. Um, there are not always things that I, I consider to be that, like um, the cutest to the TT2. Like I didn't actually like directionally where that was going and, and I could not justify the cost structure. Um, I can't, this is very hard to justify this amount of money for DAC, period, full stop. Um, but if you're in this kind of price range, if you've somehow, <laughs> if you've reconciled that with yourself, I think this is really, really a great performer. And I have listened to things that are more expensive and that then the, the law of diminishing returns comes in really acutely, uh, in my mind, but I think there's still a lot of room between the Aries and, and this stack. Okay. That's about the best I can do for you. We'll wrap this one up. I'll follow up quickly with, um, the addition of the iris and, and, and what, how that sort of plays into the package. But, um, you know, as always, thanks for hanging out and listening to me ramble. Uh, until next time, this is Signcraft signing out.